Hey, God bless you, my friend. This is Sister Sharon. And today we are discussing the dangers of being a people pleaser if you belong to Jesus Christ. My friends, you got to know and understand it is a gateway to mental health problems. It is a gateway to depression. It is a gateway to confusion. It is a gateway to unrest in your inner man because God wants to use you. And if you are afraid to assert yourself, to speak up and speak out, to say what you see, when, as they say, when you see something, you're supposed to say something. Many of us have been led to believe as believers that we should be docile at all times. Nothing should ruffle our feathers. We should just stuff it all down and sit quiet like little lambs and just don't say nothing about nothing. But in reality, my friends, it doesn't work like that. When you study the life of Jesus Christ, he was constantly having different um, scenarios where he had to bring to the religious group, most notably, very difficult things that he said. To us, it would be difficult. He called them snakes. He called them vipers. He called them hypocrites. He would challenge them. He would oftentimes use sarcasm. Jesus was not a people pleaser. He was bold. He was tenacious. He was bringing what you and I have to also look at it and bring it to the truth. The truth will oftentimes cut that other individual. It will cut you, friend. It has to, to correct you. So if you and I allow mortals to, to manipulate and control your mind, where you will not assert yourself to challenge people you say you love with the truth of how they're living, my friend, many will continue to be actually the ones to help enlarge Hell, the Bible says hell enlarges itself daily. Why? Because some of us, we see it, but we don't want to get involved. And this, as I said, my friends, is a gateway to destroy the strength of your mentality. It will destroy your mental health because you are constantly trying to avoid people. You're, you're constantly turning over in your thoughts over and over and over what you should have said and you know you should have said it. So here, I want us to look at this. We all go through it, friends, where we just don't want to go there. I do. I go through moments and times in my ministry where it's like, I just don't want to deal with this God, but I am his servant. Are you my friend? Someone is controlling you right now. Someone is controlling your thoughts, your actions, your lifestyle, your decisions. Someone is. The question before I give you these five things to take a look at, to know that you are a people pleaser and you want to denounce this, you want to begin to move towards the spirit of God to strengthen you and undergird you because my friend, to work in the harvest is hard work. You're usually going the opposite way of most people you're going to meet. And it's usually going to be some conflict. <laughs> it is what it is, my friend. And I'm telling you, it takes days of just staying before the Lord and trying your heart before the Lord, knowing that you love people eternally. That's why. It's dangerous for a believer not to understand that when you don't assert yourself to tell the truth, to help your fellow man, because many are going to get mad. They're going to say, who do you think you are? You are judgmental. You, you think you're holier than thou. You are not my judge. You know, who do you think you are? You're going to get it, my friend. It comes with this territory. But I want you to know, there are five things we need to look at and we need to remember Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25. The fear of man brings a snare 
and some and many are in a snare. Friends, daily we have to choose that we are not rippling, you know, uh, causing ripples just to cause ripples. We understand what's at stake, a person's eternal salvation. Their soul is at stake. And if we would keep that in mind, that this is not about us, if you are no longer a fornicator, you have a right to attempt to remove that speck out of your brother's eye. If you are no longer an adulterer, an adulteress, you have a right to step up and say, this is what the Lord has done for me. Brother and sister, come out of that. That's what I used to be. If you used to be a liar, if you were a thief, if you were a person that was an idolater, if you came out of witchcraft, if you came out of lifestyles of greed, beloved, it's time for you now to reach back and help your brethren to come on out. So by our testimonies, we also help to bring people into the light and into this great harvest through Jesus Christ. But let's look at this. Five things, my friend. It will destroy you. The fear of man is attached to people pleasing. You are afraid. Number one, I just said, avoiding conflict. You don't want any conflict, but beloved, you cannot work with the spirit of God and you refuse to have moments of conflict because without war, there can't be peace. That's why there is no peace with even within ourselves, friends. If we're not willing to confront the areas of our lives that are really not right, how can you find peace with yourself? How can you find peace with God if you're not willing to go to war? How much more when it comes to your loved ones and people you see every day that's going the wrong way and you won't say anything? Your silence is consent. Number two, you can't say no. You have a serious problem with saying no. But friends, saying no is something that you have to cultivate and curate. You have to learn how to say, I can't do it. I had a sister, I'm getting ready to put together our new um, outreach to women here in my area. And the one sister I asked to come on the planning committee so we could plan it out, she outright, she said, Sharon, I can't add anything else to my plate. But thank you for thinking about me, but I can't. I'm the same way. If I can't, I, I can't add nothing else to my plate unless it is something I feel that is a divine inspired thought and event or, or, you know, something I need to, to put my attention on. I can't. You have to learn to say no. It will destroy you, my friend. Number three, you want people to like you, period. But when we're carrying the gospel, when we are working the harvest, Friends, everybody just ain't going to like you. They're not going to like how you say it. They're not going to like your spirit. They're not going to like the fact that you even have the tenacity or the boldness to even say the things that you say and do the things you do. They just ain't going to like you. And you have to learn. We all do. It comes with the territory. And we have to learn to move through what we feel, which leads me to number four. You can't be afraid of others' negativity and their responses to you. Because listen, my friend, we have to choose daily. Who is controlling me today? The spirit of truth will control me today. No, no human is going to control me. Now, the Bible teaches submission one to another in a marriage covenant. And we should love one another. We should respect one another. But when it comes to eternal matters, things that could destroy you, things that could literally pull you away from God, things that could cloud your mind and confuse you and take you off course, we want to stand up for what is right, my friend. And we can't be afraid that some people just ain't going to like it. Number five, you are always sugarcoating the truth. Well, my friend, hear me very close. Some things you can't sugarcoat it. You got to call the spade a spade. You got to, as we say from the from the uh, 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 old school, you got to let that 
hammer drop. You got to just let it drop. There are things when it comes to eternity, when it comes to things that can cost you your soul, there is no way to say it but to say it. We're not going to slip out no innuendos. Some things, you got to come straight down that straight, straight street. It got to be a straight street, a straight shot. It got to be head on. It has to be targeted. It has to be looked at, shot at, and bam, there it is. That's right. Some things we can't play with it, friends, because people are going to lose their soul. It's not a game. And the, the reason this is dangerous, because the Bible tells us, it gives us insight. When God has given you something to say, something to do, he told Jeremiah, if you are afraid of them, I'm going to confound you. The Bible says that God kept telling, excuse me, Moses to go to Pharaoh. And what did Moses keep saying? I can't talk. I don't want to do this. He didn't want to do it. And the Bible says that the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses because Moses kept telling God, I can't and I don't want to. But God had chosen him. Friends, God has chosen you. And all of these excuses is pride. People are losing their souls. We cannot do this thing and be your friend. I'm not on YouTube to make friends. Brothers and sisters, the things that we're discussing has eternal ramifications. It's not a game. It's not a joke. People pleasing is dangerous. It will destroy you. God has need of you and you got to cultivate daily. I am his servant. You have to talk to yourself. You have to encourage yourself and you have to understand what's at stake. Eternity is forever and it's final. And many of us, we are depressed. We are downtrodden because we are scaredy cats. We are afraid of mortals. We are afraid of men and women. We are afraid of auntie and mama and daddies and husbands and wives when it comes to things that relate to salvation. Somebody has to know and understand that you, beloved, are not trying to hurt them. They'll say that. Who do you think you are? Blah, blah, blah. We know this. But they need to understand that except for the truth, they're not going to make it. It's not a game. So I want to encourage you, my friends. There was five things. If you're sugarcoating, you're constantly afraid of negative response. You want people to like you. You can't say no and you constantly avoid conflict. It doesn't belong on this side. Jesus Christ is our example. Jesus Christ is our example. And when we look at his life in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus was starting up stuff because he loved them. He didn't hate the Pharisees. He didn't hate the Sadducees. He didn't hate the scribes and uh, um, Sanhedrin. He didn't hate them. He spoke the truth because he knew the end is this. We are all appointed once to die and then the judgment. Some of us and some of you, you're not going to make it to the end with your family. They just ain't going to like you. <laughs> and they don't like you. And they probably will never like you. <laughs> so let's get on the Lord's side and do the thing because you cannot change how people feel about you by hiding out and not stepping up to speak the truth in love. Love is truth. And yes, sometimes it's, it comes hard because the heart, God knows the heart of many and most. And sometimes, my friend, you don't even know why you say it the way you say it, but you knew you had to say it the way you said it. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's why the messenger and the sincere believer must spend time in the secret place. That is where our strength lies, in the secret place of the Most High. Enough has been said, my friend. We got to shape the people pleasing because there is a great harvest and many people need corrected. Oh yes, the religious people who have strayed and they are lukewarm, there's no other way to get them back but through confrontation. You have to confront them. And this is why many of us, you're not gonna be liked. You will not be voted most popular. <laughs> and you gotta know what's at stake. Eternity, my friend, is final and it's forever. And the words that you have in your heart to speak to some, some things are not worth fighting about. You're not gonna, you're not gonna get no leeway fighting over things that has no eternal. It, you know, you want to fight over makeup, you want to fight over hair and nails and pants. Friends, get up off of that. As long as you ain't, long as you ain't showcasing the bodysuit, we're not gonna fight over that. We're not gonna fight over these things that don't add up to a eternal consequence. But if it does, my friend. We have to allow boldness in the spirit, Holy, Holy Ghost boldness to have its way. Amen. All right. I love you, my friends. Enough said till next time. Be encouraged, my friends. Press in day to day to say what needs to be said and don't apologize for the truth. Till next time. God bless.